Welcome to TPC. Today we're going to do a little bit of Algebra 1 end of course training using the Desmos graphing calculator and um, hopefully the tips that I give you today will be useful when you take your actual Georgia Milestones test at the end of your course. Uh, before we get started I have posted a link to this uh, page that you're seeing now and I've also posted a link to the uh, official Desmos calculator. There is a calculator embedded in this assessment that we're doing, so you won't need it for that, but I would encourage you to, to uh, bookmark that link anyway so that anytime you're doing math questions using the Desmos calculator that you're using the one that you will be using on your end of course exam. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to do is click on the link that says online tools training. And you have three choices here. Today we're going to look at the EOC test practice. And then it says there's three things here. Uh, standard online tools is the one we want for today. And then your four tests are listed. Of course, we're doing algebra. So click on algebra concepts and connections. When you get in here, it's going to basically give you some information, which is a training student information. And you're going to click continue. And then this screen will have a, uh, the name of your test, and you're going to click on the name of the test to open it. And then you're going to go ahead and you can read all of this if you want, but I'm going to kind of skip through it quickly. Uh, but it's giving you information about the tools that are within the testing platform. So begin the test. And the first item we're going to look at is the first item in here, and that is item number one. And we're looking at a quadratic function, and we're looking for an equivalent form that reveals the minimum. So it can't just be equivalent, it needs to also reveal the minimum. So let's see what that looks like. First of all, you're going to go up here to the toolbar, and you've got to be careful. This first button that says calculator is not the calculator we're going to use today. We're actually using the one that says graphing tool. And that is the official Desmos graphing calculator for the state of Georgia. And I'm going to pull this over. Unfortunately, I can't resize it, which is kind of a pain, but we're going to go ahead and work around that. So step one is to type in the function that you see. Okay, and so here's the parabola. And it says which equivalent form reveals the minimum. So a good idea is to click on the minimum so that you can see the minimum. Well, I see 4 and negative 1 in this um, graph. For, and the minimum is actually the negative 1. So I'm guessing answer choice B is correct because it's the only one that has both of those numbers in it. But let's go ahead and put answer choice B on the second row of the calculator. And if you didn't know already, Shift-6 will make an exponent, and then you can type your 2 so that you don't have to use the keyboard uh, to input that. I don't even see the keyboard on here, so oh, there it is. Uh, so yeah, Shift-6 is how you do that. So x minus 4 squared, and I still need the minus 1. And what you should notice now is in the graph there is a blue parabola that is actually right on top of the red one. If you'll click this button here, it'll turn off the blue one, and you'll see that red one. So that does tell me that answer choice B is correct. So you would select answer choice B. The next question we're looking at is question two. It was the next one in the test, and we're going to use the graphing tool as well on this one. Uh, we're looking for the function that can be used to model the data that is in this table. So start by pressing graphing tool, and then I'm going to move this down, and I'm going to type in the first answer choice, f of x equals 3x. Then I'm going to go to the next row in my table, or in my calculator, and click on this plus sign. And on that list, you'll see table. So click table. And then I want you to type in the x coordinates of the points that are already in the table in the test. So 0, 2, and 6. Now the y coordinates, we're not going to type anything in these cells, but we are going to take the y1 and take it out. You can delete, backspace, and then you're going to type f of x, and then just type a 1. 
it will subscript the one for you. You don't have to type anything special to make that happen. Just type X1 and then close your parentheses. And you'll notice what it did is it put some numbers here in this column for you to examine. This point, these points do not have Y coordinates that match the Y coordinates in this table. So we know this is not the correct function. Fortunately, we don't have to do any more work with that table. All we're going to do is change the function to match answer choice B. So I'm going to delete 3x, type x divided by. The divide is actually on the same button the question mark is on your keyboard. So just press that button that has the question mark, but don't press shift. And that will give you the divide. And then put your 2. And then out to the side, we're going to put minus 1. And now you'll notice that the y coordinates that are under f of x1 are negative 1, 0, and 2. And those do match the ones that are in the test. So the correct answer in this problem is answer B. So choose B. Now we've skipped question three and we are on question four and I do want to point out I am strategically choosing questions in this test so that we I can show you the tools that are in Desmos. Uh, the point of this training is to get you comfortable with Desmos so that you can use it to improve your score, to improve your performance, and to minimize your mistakes. So hopefully um, I'm not going to work all the items, but I am going to work the ones that pertain to the Desmos graphing calculator. There may be others that you could use the calculator on, but the ones I'm showing you are more, I guess. They have a few things in here you may not have seen before, so I just want to make sure you're aware of them. Let's click on the graphing tool for this one. This problem is a quadratic equation, and... Um, Sometimes this doesn't work, so I haven't actually done this problem in your calculator yet to see. Oh, it does work. Uh, what happens if you type an equation into Desmos uh, that has an equal, like an equal sign with stuff on both sides? It will go ahead and solve the equation, and it will represent the solutions with vertical lines in the graph. So you can click on these vertical lines. Uh, and those are your solutions. Now, you're looking at these answer choices thinking, how in the world is that the same? Well, actually, they are the same. These are decimal representations of irrational answers. So that's why they're not very pretty decimals. But the nice thing is I can type these answers into my calculator, and I'm going to do that. So let's start with answer choice A and see what this one looks like. It says negative 3 plus or minus square root of 2. So we'll type negative 3 plus, we can't type minus yet, we're just going to type plus, and then we're going to do square root. Well, i got a cool little trick here if you don't know it. S-Q-R-T will give you a square root. Just type those four letters, S-Q-R-T, and it will make that square root and you'll put a 2. Now, of course, there is a keyboard here at the bottom of your calculator. You can use that to get square root. It's right here. But I'm going to be showing you all the keyboard shortcuts because that will just save you a second or two. It's not that big a deal, but it is kind of nice to know the keyboard shortcuts when you can. All right, now the next one I'm going to type is actually the same answer choice. I'm still on answer choice A, but it has the minus sign this time. So we're going to do negative 3 minus square root of 2, S-Q-R-T, and then put that 2 in there. And what you're going to notice is that these answers that I just got are right on top of that red line that was in the graph. And now I can see the solutions are the same solutions that were in that first uh, row there. So this was the correct answer. And all I had to do was type the equation, type the answer choice, and then notice that it matched up. So the graphs will match when they are solutions. Now let me show you what happens if they're not solutions. Let's just make this into a 5. You see how that line went somewhere else? It's not a solution anymore because it's not on top of one of these red vertical lines. So the correct answer was the first one, negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 2. The next question we're looking at is question number five, and this is a table with some data, and we are asked to find the constant percent rate of change. So we're going to use the calculator again. Uh, let's go ahead and click on the plus sign, and let's click on table, and we're going to add this table. Now, as I'm typing in these numbers, you'll notice I'm not typing commas. We do not type commas into Desmos. 
Uh, those are there to help you read the number, but they're not very helpful in the calculator. In fact, the calculator will give you an error message if you try to type the commas. Now, when I do this, I don't see any points graph, so I'm going to click this little thing here that says Zoom Fit, and when I do that, the points will show up in the graph. Now, at first glance, these do appear to fall in a straight line, uh, but that's because these are huge numbers and these are... Uh, not very many data points. So what we're going to do is here, we're going to look closer at these numbers. We're looking for a percent rate of change. That is not a linear function when you have a percent rate. And let me show you what I mean. Let's take the second number, 1,100, and subtract the first number. And that number is 100. So it went up 100. But then if you take from 110 to 1210, or 1,100 to 1210, I should say, and you subtract those two numbers, these are called your first differences, you'll see that these numbers are not the same. So the y values are not increasing at a constant rate, so I know it's not linear. So the question is, what is it if it's not linear? And here's, here's how you'll determine. You're going to take the difference that you just found, which is 100, and I want to know what percent rate that is. So I'm going to take the 100, which is the difference in the first two numbers, and divide that by the 1,000. And that was 0.1, which is the same as 0.10. So it looks like the rate is 10%. So to verify that, I'm going to take the next number, which is 110, and multiply it by 10%, which is 0.1 or 0 0.10. You can put the 0, it won't matter. And look at that. It's going to go up 110. Well, let's see if that's true. It sure did. It went from 1,100 to 1,210. So 1,100 plus 110, it went up 12 to 1,210. So this constant rate of change or constant percent rate of change is actually 10%. Uh, and to review, all I did was take the first two numbers and subtract it to get 100 and then divided the 100 by the starting number which was 1000 and got 0.1 so the correct answer in this case was a the next item we're looking at is question number seven and you can skip over to that one this one has two parts so two pages for for this problem something to remember when you go to the next page things that you've typed in the calculator you're not going to see those on the next page. So anytime you want to go to another page and you think you may need to come back, it would be a smart thing to uh, go ahead and take whatever you've written down or typed and just make a note of it on your scratch paper so that you have access to that. All right, in this case, we're given the area of a rectangle is x squared uh, plus 6x. The beauty of Desmos is it will treat this as a function. You don't have to type anything like y equals or f of x equals. You can just type the expression. As long as it has x's in it, it will identify that as a function and graph it. So here I have a parabola in the graph. This is a quadratic function and I'm looking for the length and the width of a rectangle that has this area. Well, hopefully you know that you need the length times the width to get the area. There is a reference sheet here. I don't know. Is that on here? Let's see if they have area formula. I don't think so. So they don't have any geometry formula, so I'm not sure how that would help on this problem. But hopefully you know that. We're going to multiply x times x plus 6. Now, super important to remember, when you multiply a binomial like x plus 6 times something, you do need to enclose your binomials, your trinomials in parentheses. In fact, you could just use parentheses on everything and not have to worry about it. So let's see, I think I'll do that. I put my x in parentheses, that was my length, and my width in parentheses. And now those are multiplied together and look what happened. These parabolas are the same. <laughs> The blue, when you turn it off by clicking the blue dot, is on top of the red one. So that's telling you that the length and the width, that length and width multiply to give you that area. So the correct answer on part A was A. All right, we're still on question seven, and we've gone to the next page. So this is a different um, expression. So we're going to go ahead and use the graphing tool to graph this expression. So x squared plus 7x plus 12. 
It says the area of the second rectangle is x squared plus 7x plus 12. What is the sum of the two areas? Okay, well, unfortunately, I didn't write down the first area. So before we can do this problem, I'm going to go ahead and copy this, Control-C. I'm going to go back to the last problem and get that answer. Remember I said you had to write this down? This is exactly what I meant, x squared plus 6x. And now when I go to my calculator, this is gone, but I copied it. So let's see if it'll let me paste. Control-V, and it did. So I didn't have to retype it. I did Control-C to copy and Control-V. So I'm going to do x squared plus 6x. Now here's the problem. I need to add these together. The sum means to add the two rectangles. Now hopefully you know how to do that, but if you don't, I'm going to show you a workaround. So I'm going to say f of x equals and g of x equals. In other words, I just gave them names. So you can just make up any function name that you like and call it a function of x f of x, g of x, and those are the same two parabolas, but if I want the sum, I need to add f of x plus g of x, and when I do, it's going to make a third parabola in my graph. So here's the thing. I need to know which of these four answer choices are the same as the green one, because I want f of x plus g of x. There's way too much going on in this graph, so what I'm going to do is turn off the red one and turn off off the blue one and all I can look at now is this green one. So let's try typing the first answer choice which is x squared plus 7x plus 18 and that is definitely not the same parabola so it's not that one. Let's try the next one 2x squared plus 13x plus 12 and that one is the same. So the correct answer was answer B. That concludes our test practice for today. We did five items today. We'll do another five items next week. So if you'll be on the lookout about this time next week, you should find another video with five more items, learning all about the Desmos calculator and what you can do to improve your score.